Welcome to the next part of our swing ride example, which is really a uh, rubber stopper example. And now I'm just going to work through that problem, but instead of instead of using numbers, I'm going to just do it generically. So we've got a stopper swinging around. Uh, attached to a string of length L. Okay, the string forms an angle with the vertical theta. The stopper has a mass M. Okay, now as we saw when we worked with the particular example, the center of the orbit is the center of the plane swept out by the stopper, which is over here, not up here. So the center of the orbit is there, and that means that the radius of the orbit is here. And so the first thing we can work out um, is we'll assume that at some point we know what L and theta is. So we can work out what R is by simply using some trig. We'll know that R over L is the sine of theta, and so therefore r is equal to l times the sine of theta. And then we saw we needed to draw a free body diagram and that the tension in the string of course follows along the string and so we had tension acting on the mass and we also had the force of gravity which is m times g and that the centripetal force is the x component of the tension. So this is not a free body diagram now because I put components on but I'm saving a little time. And the y component of the tension is like that. So you can kind of mentally erase the tension vector because these two vectors add up to it. So we can, we're, this is how we're thinking about the problem. Now, if uh, this angle is theta up here, this is 90 minus theta. That's not very convenient. When I did the problem, because we had an actual number, I used uh, 90 minus theta here, but that's not very handy. So I'm just going to draw that vertical in so we have theta. And remember, this vertical is just a copy of Ty. So I can redraw my force diagram like this. I have Ty, I have Tx, I have T, and I have theta, that theta being the same as that theta. All right, so our uh, calculation um, chain was in order to get Tx we have to start with what we know. So we know, we only know the force of gravity but there's only two vertical forces operating, the force of gra gravity and the y component of tension. So they must be equal in magnitude. So the y component in, of tension has a magnitude of mg. And we want the x component because the x component is the centripetal force. So in order to do that, we can just use, uh, we'll know what theta is and we'll know what m, we know what mg is, so we just use tangent tx over ty, which is mg, is equal to the tangent of theta. So tx is mg times the tangent of theta, and that is the centripetal force. All right, so then, oh, and as an aside, if we needed to figure out T, we could do that, right? We could just, uh, uh, one way, if we have Tx, we could just use Pythagoras. Or if we hadn't calculated Tx, we could use cosine. Ty over T is the cosine of theta. So we could make a little note here. Uh, Ty over T is the cos of theta, so that makes T equal to Ty times the cos of theta. 
So if you need the tension in the string, that's how you can get it. Well, that was a big mistake. And I leave it in here because A, I'm just too lazy to re-record the whole video. And B, just to show, yeah, you can do silly things, especially when you're trying to do them in your head. So here's what should have happened. So uh, T Y over T is the cosine of theta. Now we've seen this uh, maneuver before. If you do the three steps of algebra, you end up just swapping the uh, T and the cos theta. So T Y over cos theta is equal to T. And that is the correct way to calculate the tension in the string uh, from the data that you have. Remember we know that Ty is equal to mg. Alright, going back to our main calculation. So we now know what the centripetal force is because we'll know what the mass is, we'll know what g is, we know what the angle is. But if we look at the formula for centripetal force, say we want to know what the velocity of the orbiting object is, well, mg tan theta is mv squared over r. And lo and behold, the m's cancel out. So the square of the velocity the square of the speed of the orbiting object is r times g times the tangent of theta. And so taking the square root of that, we can get uh, the velocity of the um, mass. So the main point here is that by looking at the situation without numbers, looking at it symbolically, we can see that the mass does not matter that in the in the sense that the mass does not affect the speed of the orbiting object if it's in orbit uh, and if r is the radius then uh, the speed will that will be the speed if we want to get a little more clever we could substitute this expression in for the radius um, if you sort of anticipate what will happen, we'll end up with sine theta times tan theta. That doesn't actually produce any huge sim simplification. So we'll just it would just be L times sine theta times G times tan theta. So, um, but that has the advantage. Then we have an expression for the square of the velocity just using the basic numbers from the problem so that's kind of nice anyway uh, hopefully that gives you a little insight into uh, uh, how this uh, actually works in the real world and the fact that we actually don't have to know what the mass is which means that you can face a problem like this where the mass is not given which may make you uncomfortable at the beginning so what you would do is you would just sort of write m everywhere you wanted the mass to be and at some point you would get to an equation like this where you'd be able to cancel the mass out. So that's how it all works. Uh, thank you for watching. If you want to find some other physics videos about centripetal force or other topics in Physics 101, then uh, just go to youcanlearnthis.com and you'll find a growing collection of lessons and simulations there. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, if you want to say thanks, then go to youcanlearnthis.com and buy me a coffee. See you next time.